The first ever luxury timepiece to be crafted in stainless steel was an Audemars Piquet Royal Oak. A highly sought after brand with limited production and availability, beautiful in its design and very exclusive. This lady. Stuff that! I thought I'd do a live unboxing and uh, I have not seen this, so I am virgin with you. So let's just have a quick look at this box here and it's very sterile indeed. It just has Seiko in silver and the lid comes off separately. There's inside and it has a little flap there. So what do we have here? This should be the warranty book. There's the warranty card, a certificate of guarantee and it's stamped by the watch and clock shop which is Watcho .co.uk and with these guys they actually give you an extended warranty so you have three years which is really good to have so let's just put that to one side ah there's a little book here let's just pull that out wow that is metallic silver oh, I haven't seen that before so that is the module number H851 it's got T7 on there so does it have English ah English is right at the back and there is some diagrams of the actual watch and uh, yeah it's very basic but as always, I will be doing a full tutorial, so probably we can chuck that away. So let's remove this. So it's a box in a box. So remove that. And this is more like the traditional box here. This is going to be hinged. Anything underneath? No. Again, it's all very sterile. So here we go. Oh, I can smell the Japanese air. <gasps> Oh, sweets. And here it is, guys. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. That is absolutely crazy. That's quite tall. So I will be doing measurements and weight as well. Silicon strap there. There's the keeper. That's really nice, isn't it? In stainless. And there is the buckle. Yes, it's from the Prospex range. And there is the reference number. And there's also another bit of information there as well. What's that say? There we go, it's a diver's watch. So let's get it off the pillow. Mmm, nice. Oh, I love the smell of new things. And that's the inside of the empty box. And uh, we're not really too much into that. We want to have a look at this. Let me set myself up a little bit better. And uh, let's go around this in some more detail. So I've got all the tags removed now so it won't clash against the camera. And I have to come back to that keeper. That is really square indeed and does have a brushed finish and the buckle is something I wasn't expecting let's have a little sneaky look on the underside so it says Seiko stainless steel very thick indeed and um, and polished so let's have a look on the underside while we've got the strap undone. We've got Seiko written on the keeper end with a nice texture. And it continues on that side there, finishing off with the traditional famous logo there from Seiko. Now look at the back case and it's got the blue sticker on and it's made in China. Well, I wasn't expecting that. And uh, 
there is the module number there and you've got a serial number so screw down case back very nice let's have a look at the dial here and uh, I think I'm gonna kick off with the loom because I want to know what that is like now I've got my UV light and I'm giving it a charge and uh, the pip is really bright but the 12 o'clock position and where 11 and 1 markers are it looks like it's been squashed which is quite unusual to see so I think that's enough charge and it is in green yeah quite quite strong and hopefully long lasting too. So when I first saw the pictures of this, I thought these were buttons as well. And it's not, these actually are the hex head screws that retain that tuna shroud. And that tuna shroud is resin. And uh, these are the pushers. And they look like they are screw down pushers. And the crown, very big indeed. There's some chunk on that. And there's no crown guards whatsoever. So they're really keeping it sort of close to the original Arnie. The only sort of difference apart from this being solar powered and written on the dial. On the original Arnie, it had the depth meter there where you'd use the bezel to calculate your uh, distance and time when rising out of the waters. So let's have a little crack on the bezel. Yep, yeah, that's very sort of SKX, I would say. Yeah, has a good, nice firm, not tinny, nice and firm. Yeah, any back play? No, not at all. Does it line up? 120 clicks of goodness and straight on there it's all lined up with the bezel and the chapter ring chapter ring does have an edge on there and then it has a secondary chapter ring and here is marked with the 24 hour markers on the original it would be marked differently and the dial there is quite small let's compare that to a turtle this turtle has the skx dial just uh, in case you are wondering and yes it is modified and it has a uh, sapphire crystal as well so there is the difference and they're quite similar the only big difference is the chunk of it and the thickness of that arnie let's have a little comparison on the bezel yeah the turtle is bigger on that side and I would say they're roughly about the same weight maybe the Arnie has a little bit more but I will do measurements and weight in a moment let's compare it also to another tuner I have the Sun 021 quite alike aren't they so let's have a look at the thickness compared to those two yeah sort of almost the same thickness a measure on the bezel yeah you can see it's is smaller i am shaking a little bit because i am really really nervous doing this as uh, because um i don't know if this is the very first review on one of these so i don't want to cock it up so what else do we want to see on here let's have a look i'm doing this all with you i haven't I have, this is the first time i've actually handled this watch so you've got divers 200 in orange and it's got the prospects logo there i'm not too much of a fan on that they could have not had that on there and uh, the hands are finished in stainless steel and the second hand looks like that is blacked out there yeah it's sort of very skx in there the lcd display there is very crystal clear it's very high definition very small though i thought it might have been a little bit bigger and the second counter is 
have uh, smaller digits compared to the rest. That's a very unusual sort of icon there. I have no idea what that is. Uh, P is obviously AM and PM. So let's have a little bit more detail on this. Just like to show as much as possible. Now that display is very deep into the uh, dial there. Quite unusual. So looking at the oh, those lug. Oh, they've got drilled lugs. Brilliant. And I do like the squareness on there. Very much sort of to the original. So nice and stretchy. And they probably will be fluff magnets to begin with. So there's the edge on there. That's all uh, sort of brushed finish. The only polishing is really on the lugs and the underside. There's an edge there. These are the pushers. They feel they've got a little bit of pushiness. They're not actually doing anything. And screw down crown. So I will be doing a full tutorial. So see if I can sort of work this out a little bit. So uh, counterclockwise and the crown comes out. So there is no hand winding whatsoever because it's all solar powered. So if I pulled that out, so you've got one position and I've noticed that the uh, second is flashing away. And that's it, there is no other position by the feel of it, just on one position. So if I turn the crown, oh that was interesting, it goes back to zero. And if I go clockwise, well if I go anti-clockwise, yeah. Okay, so you can set that, because there's no atomic timekeeping on this. So if I set that to zero, and then push the crown in, brilliant. So that's how you adjust that. So if I wanted to adjust the hands, how does that work? So the pushes, I need to unscrew. So, oh, hang on, just notice something else. That little icon's gone. So if I push the crown in, ah, that is cool. So when you see that icon, that means your crown is in. And when I pull it out, it goes off. So indicating that the crown isn't in. Oh, that's very cool indeed. Now, I'm interested about these pushers and how they work. Now, they feel very, very stiff. Ah, okay. They're counterclockwise. Ah, oh, I can see the pusher coming out. Yeah, look, I'll get some detail on that. So I can get it. Oh, it's going forward, isn't it? It's got to train the brain to go forward. So, watch the pusher come out. Can you see that? Wow, look at that. So that should be the same. Oh, that's really unusual. So they're counterclockwise, and the crown is anti-clockwise, or anti-clockwise to, well, just like what you do on a jam jar. So what does the button up here do? Oh, the backlight. Oh yeah, let's have a look. Oh, nice, it's in blue. That's really nice for a few seconds. Yeah, that's good, I like that. So let's have a look at the bottom pusher. What does that do? Get some, so that's the date. And you've got something time with L. That could be the dual time. Then there's a stopwatch and an alarm. And that's it. That's all you get on there. So um, if I went to, to... Let's have a play around with the stopwatch. So stopwatch. Maybe the light button. Ah, brilliant. One hundredth of a second. And maybe this button does the lap. No, it takes you back out. So let's go back again. So that's running. So I've pushed that top pusher. Oh, that just stops it. So how do you reset that? Hmm. Let's go back again. So that starts stop. 
maybe it's a long press ah long press to reset ah that was cool so if I start that so if I had the crown out in say the first position ah you can't operate the buttons okay so when the crown's out you can't use the buttons right so let's push that back in so if we stop that well it doesn't matter actually you can just well you can do it either way it's either running or it's when it's stopped just a long press okay and alarm I guess the alarm is with the crown pulled out yeah so you can change the hours and the minutes I'm pushing this here a bit like a, a Casio G-Shock and that's it hour to, and then use the crown to adjust yeah look and you can go back is there any fast forwarding no. Oh, yeah, did it do something? Well, it sort of goes quickly, doesn't it? So you can either click it once at a time. It's a very small dial, so I'm really trying to get that all in picture there. So just having a play with it. If you're finding this boring, you can always fast forward to the actual proper tutorial. So I push that back in, and that is the alarm. So how do you turn the alarm on and off because I don't want it to go off and on so would it be would it be a long press I don't know no idea that just does a light anyway I'm gonna stop playing around too much and uh, look at that a bit later now I'm in the home screen now so that wasn't a gun going off that was a door because it's quite windy outside so if I pulled that out and it went flashing to the seconds there's the minutes and there's your hours so how do I adjust that to a.m. and p.m. to 24 hours so that's the date there's your month you've got your year ah is that something ah brilliant so I can have 24 hour format that's what I like brilliant that's really good so uh, just push that back in I'll sure mess around and adjust all that uh, time and date uh, later so that is all the functions it does and let's see what it's like putting that crown back in yep yeah nice yeah see anti-clockwise yeah it feels feels really good really smooth just like a turtle now the buttons here so it's away from so it goes away from you what else do we need to look on this I think I really need to get on to the instructions and really work out how to use this so I can give you guys a real full tutorial and when I hear the alarm going off and all the other things but till then I'm just gonna do the quick measurements now and uh, get that part done. So let's kick off with the turtle, see how heavy that is just for a comparison. So that's 125 grams, and this one is 114. That's very, very surprising, because when in the hand, the Arnie just feels that little bit heavier. That's very odd indeed. Well, on my part it is. The shroud, width is 47.40 uh, with the screw and the crown you're measuring about 51 I think I just saw about 51 51.2 there and uh, let's do a sort of rough lug to lug it's about 53 and how fat are you there we go so it's 14.2 Six, two. So I've just found out that if you pull the crown out to the first position and then push the pushes together, you get a test screen, much like on a G-Shock. And then I'm uh, just wondering if there's any other displays. Uh, no, that's it. So let's get on with the tutorial.
say that the instruction manual is so easy to follow that you don't really need a tutorial. So, as always, thanks for... Actually, I'm only kidding. Now, page 57. Liquid crystal panel. Apparently, the liquid crystal panel has a life of seven years. Well, after seven years, the contrast decreases and the numbers will be hard to read. So basically, you need to return it back to whoever you bought it from and they will replace it for free. I thought that was quite interesting to read. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is unscrew the crowns. Now, playing around with it, I can actually understand why they have got the anti-clockwise and clockwise, because when you're unscrewing, you're unscrewing towards you. And on this side, you see, I'm going towards me. And when I need to screw them up and tighten them, it's all going away from me. So that makes logic sense. So what do I start off with? Well, because it's solar powered, I thought I would go through the sort of battery side. And just to let you know that it does have a power save. It also has a sleep function. So basically, if nothing's used or pressed for a couple of hours and it's not left in any light source, it will go to a power save and a little icon will appear on this small digital display there. And after three days of not being used, it will go into the sleep and you will either have PS or SL flashing in the dial. Before I go any further, I'm going to call this top button B and this bottom button A, and because in the manual that is how they've described it. Usually when I do G-Shocks, this is button A and so on. So from home screen, we can check the battery level by pressing button B for a few seconds, and in the digital display, it will show BAT 10, and 10 meaning it's fully charged. And when it goes to bat zero, everything will stop. So you will need to uh, charge it up. And you can see that it automatically goes back to time. In home time, if you press buttons A and B at the same time, you get to have an alarm test. Also, when you've pressed it, you'll have a little bell icon. And this means that the hourly alarm or the hourly signal is set. Also, it means that it will beep through the functions. And with a higher pitch once you reach the home time. It's pretty much like a G-Shock. To turn this off, you can just push them both together quickly. And now the icon has gone out. So now when I go through the modes, it is in stealth mode. Now in this tutorial, I think I'm going to have a little bit of tone, so at least I can follow what I'm doing. Next, I want to do a hand calibration, and I would recommend this. So what you do, you pull the crown out in the only position, and then press B. Now remember, this is your adjust button. That's how I'm going to start to remember. And you press this for a few seconds, and then it comes up with S set and the S stands for the second hand, and here you can adjust it. Now you can't go backwards, you can only go forwards, so it's a little time consuming because you have to go all the way around once. But then again, you've only really got to do this the once, hopefully. So let's just get that as accurate as possible. Here it comes. So. And I'm sure you know what's going to happen next. I push button A and it now goes to M set. Yes, the minute hand. And here, oh, you can go backwards. Oh, that's good. So it's just the second hand that can, ah, oh, it went a bit too quick there. Okay, so I take it if you do a longer turn or a quicker turn, it's very, very pinpoint. So. Let's do this. I'm doing this all behind the viewfinder. 
and then when I press it for the third time it's going for the H set, the hour hand and once you're happy and you're calibrated just push in the crown and it resorts back to normal running time. In the manual it states that if the battery is fully charged but the functions don't behave normally there is a master reset and so what you do you are in home screen or home time you pull the crown out in the first position and then hold down buttons A and B for at least 10 seconds. Now it's going to reset itself. The screen goes blank. This is all quite normal. And then it goes back to checking the hands. And I've seen that the second hand is actually out of alignment. And then when you're done, you just push the crown in. So just in case anything happens, at least you know how to master reset it. Now with everything reset, I need to uh, set the time and date. So in home screen, just pull the crown out. You've seen this before with the flashing seconds. Now, if you just turn the crown, you know that it goes back to zero. So the time is about 30, for seven, about 37, so let's see how easy is it to get to 37. And not too bad. There we go. It takes. I think it's gonna take a little bit of more playing around. It does have a clicking. You feel it clicking on the crown. So that's the minutes, and now I need to set the hour, and that's at 6 p.m. So I'm just going to, there it is, 6 p.m. Done there, so. And then when you press it again, I can adjust today's date. I don't know, if, can you go backwards? Oh, you can go backwards, that's good. So let's go to the 19th, and then it is the 8th, like so. Then the year is already set, so like so, that's already done. And then I can change, because I found this out from the beginning, that can go to 24, and then it should be the seconds. I'll just leave the seconds for the moment, and then it's just push the crown back in, and then the hands whiz around, like so. Perfect, there it goes, 28, 29, absolutely spot on. Next is the modes, and I just wanna point this out, that if you're, say, in the second mode, if you long press on button A, it takes you straight back to home screen. thought I'd just point that out because it's quite handy. So the first mode would be your date. There it's coming up with M019, Monday the 19th. And I think this is great because now I could screw down that pusher and now it's blocked. So I now I just have the time and date as my choice. So let's unscrew that and go to the second mode. And the second mode is, this is called local time. Um, so you could use this as a second world time feature. So to adjust this is pretty much like how you would adjust the home time. So you just pull the crown and you have the option to change the hours or the minutes with a press of button uh, A, I'm trying to remember, and that's all you get. And using the crown again, you can advance this. And once you have got that set to how you like it, just push the crown and it returns back like so. So from a local time or dual time or whatever you want to uh, call it, we have the stopwatch. Now this is just a very simple start stop. There's your start and there's your stop. And I've already played with this, haven't I? Because I worked it out that you just hold it down for a few seconds and you can reset it. 
That is very cool. Now this will count up to 99 hours and 59 minutes and 59 seconds. And once it's completed, it will just stop. So there, stop there. So you can either have it running or you can just long press and that would just reset it. From stopwatch, next is the alarm. So this is basically the same as the other time adjustments. So let's set the time to go off in a moment. So 18, and I'm going to put it on 40, that'd be 47 now. So let's just take that through there. And um, I'd say behind the viewfinder, uh, 45, let's go this, 45, six, seven. So once you push the crown in, you have the alarm icon there. I thought that was to do with the crown that's sticking out and it's not. That is actually the alarm icon. And you can turn this off and on by pushing uh, button B and uh, A together. Let's get it up right. And you push that together and it turns it off. So once you've set the alarm, it turns it on automatically. Just give you an example. So if I just pulled the crown out, pushed it back in, it turns it on. So let's have a little listen to how loud the alarm is. I think it's going to be quite loud and uh, be interesting because I think this is louder than a G-Shock. Yeah, that's pretty loud. Now that will go off for 10 seconds. You can turn the alarm by pushing any of the pushers, but if you've got them screwed down, then by the time you've unscrewed it, it's a bit pointless. So turning that alarm off, pushing button B and A. Now pushing mode, it goes back to home time. And the last feature, I thought I would test the hourly signal. And that's what it sounds like. So that is everything covered. Now, the big question. Do I recommend this new Arnie Seiko? And I have to say, most definitely. If you like mechanical watches and you like their fiddling, then this has that sort of fiddling side. Um, even though it's all very digital, it is very involving with turning the crown and having those clicks and then turning these crowns and making the pushers go back in. I really, really am liking this more and more and it is so, so comfy on the wrist and it has a great presence. The lug width is perfect. It really is perfect and this will suit much smaller wrists as well. I would like to say a huge thank you to watcho.co.uk for supplying me this Arnie watch. No, they did not give it to me. I bought it fair and square off their website. And I also like that they give you that one year extra warranty, so making it up to three years. So again, guys, thanks very much. And uh, we'll keep in contact because I want to visit you again, guys, uh, hopefully in October to film some of your new watches. That would be great to see you and also to see your new range. And because I've bought this watch, you've get in a honest opinion and review on this because this I'm going to keep. This watch is really has taken me back to the predator times. I think I need to watch that movie again. Anyway, that is the Arnie time. And as always, thanks for watching. Get down.